Ever wondered how America got its name? It all started with the birth of a boy named Amerigo Vespucci in Florence, Italy. Born on March 9, 1451 or possibly 54 scholars are still in dispute, Vespucci was the third son in a cultured family, his parents being friends of the influential Medici family. His father, a notary in Florence, and his mother, Lisabetta Mini, raised him with an appreciation for learning. While his older brothers went off to study at the University of Pisa, young Amerigo received his early education from his uncle Giorgio, a Dominican friar. In his early 20s, Vespucci's life took an exciting turn. His uncle Guido, Florence's ambassador to France, sent him on a brief diplomatic mission to Paris. This journey sparked a fascination with travel and exploration, planting the early seeds of curiosity that would set the foundation for his future voyages. Before he set sail, Vespucci experienced a diverse career ranging from banking to diplomacy. In his early 20s, he undertook a brief diplomatic mission to Paris, an adventure that sparked his fascination with travel and exploration. As he grew older, Vespucci found himself pressured into business by his father. Initially, he dabbled in various endeavors in Florence, but later transitioned to banking in Seville, Spain. There, he formed a partnership with Gianetto Berardi, another Florentine. In the late 1400s, Vespucci found himself working for the powerful Medici family. During this period, he learned of explorers seeking a northwest passage through the Indies. This information, coupled with his business struggles, stirred his interest in exploration further. His intrigue peaked when he met Christopher Columbus in Seville in 1496, after the latter's return from America. The tales Columbus shared of his voyages left a deep impression on Vespucci. He yearned to witness the world's wonders firsthand, and his business, struggling to turn a profit, provided little reason for him to stay. By the late 1490s, Vespucci knew that King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Spain were funding voyages by other explorers. This knowledge, along with his desire for discovery and the prospect of fame, led Vespucci to make a pivotal decision. In his 40s, he chose to leave his business behind and become an explorer. With a dwindling business and an opportunity for exploration knocking at his door, Vespucci decided to embark on a journey that would change the course of history. On May 10, 1497, Amerigo Vespucci embarked on his first voyage, setting sail towards the unknown. With the wind in his sails and curiosity fueling his journey, Vespucci ventured into the vast Atlantic. His fleet, a small group of ships, was guided by the stars and a compass tools of the trade for the explorers of the 15th century. Vespucci's voyages took him to places that had been uncharted by Europeans. His travels led him to the coastline of what we now know as South America, where he discovered present-day Rio de Janeiro and Rio de la Plata. These were lands of staggering natural beauty, with lush rainforests, towering mountains, and rivers that seemed to stretch on forever. Vespucci was astounded by these new lands, so different from anything he had known in Europe. On his third voyage, Vespucci made a monumental realization. He came to believe that the lands he was exploring were not part of Asia, as previously thought by Christopher Columbus, but were in fact a new world, a continent previously unknown to the people of Europe. This was a significant departure from the prevailing belief of the time and it was a testament to Vespucci's observational skills and his willingness to challenge established notions. Vespucci meticulously documented his travels. His letters and reports painted vivid pictures of the New World, capturing the imagination of people back in Europe. His writings were widely circulated and read with great interest by scholars, sailors, and the general public alike. Vespucci's voyages not only added to the geographical knowledge of the era, but also led to a significant naming event. His belief in the existence of a new world, distinct from Asia, and his detailed accounts of his discoveries played a pivotal role in shaping the world map as we know it today. These voyages were the first steps in a journey that would eventually lead to the naming of a whole continent after him. The new world, as Vespucci had called it, would soon become known as America. In 1507, a new name was proposed for the New World America, named after the man who believed he had discovered it, Amerigo Vespucci. In the quiet town of saint de vosges in northern France, a group of scholars were diligently working on a geography book called Cosmographiae Introductio. 
This wasn't just any book, it contained large cutout maps that the reader could assemble into their own globes, a novel concept for the time. Among these scholars was a German cartographer named Martin Wald Simuler. Having closely followed the discoveries and explorations of the time, Wald Simuler was particularly intrigued by the voyages of Amerigo Vespucci. Vespucci, an Italian explorer, had ventured across the Atlantic and believed that he had discovered a new continent which he referred to as the New World. This was not just another part of Asia as initially believed by many, but an entirely new land mass. Inspired by Vespucci's conviction, Wald Simuler proposed a bold idea. He suggested that the Brazilian portion of the New World as depicted in their book should bear a new name, America. This was a feminized version of Amerigo, a tribute to the man who had ventured into the unknown and returned with tales of a new continent. This wasn't just a mere suggestion, it was a monumental shift in perspective a recognition of Vespucci's belief in his discovery. The name America was printed across the vast expanse of the southern continent on the book's globe, and it didn't take long for the name to catch on. As copies of Cosmographiae Introductio spread across Europe, so did the name America. It was a fitting tribute to Vespucci, a man who had dared to imagine a world beyond the known horizons. And so the new world had a new name, one that would forever be associated with discovery, exploration, and the spirit of adventure. Thus, Amerigo Vespucci, a man of humble beginnings, became the namesake of one of the world's largest continents. Amerigo Vespucci passed away on February 22, 1512, leaving behind a legacy that would last for centuries. His voyages of exploration altered the course of world history, and his name was immortalized in the naming of a continent. Despite his Italian origins, Vespucci's name has become synonymous with the New World a testament to his significant contributions to exploration and geographical understanding. So the next time you think of America, remember Amerigo Vespucci, the man whose name the continent carries?